Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to go over a topic of how to simplify printing a complex object without using support. This doesn't work for everything. It requires specific circumstances to exist, but stay tuned. I'm going to show you one of those specific circumstances now. So the specific use case now, remember this is very niche, but if your project happens to fit this niche, this comes in very, very handy. Let me get a little more light. That's a little better. So this person's trying to print a nose cone with little fins sticking out of that nose cone all the way around. You're going to see that in the next clip. Now, the problem is those, those, you know, you print this, obviously this is going to print just fine and then it's going to fail here. And we all know why it's going to fail because it's gravity printing. There's nothing to hold this up. So it makes a nasty little mess and we don't want that. So how can you print that without having to print, you know, all this support to hold all these fins up because there's like 30 of those fins all the way around so how do we get around that break the model in two now you might not have access to the ability to break the model in two but that's okay because you can do it in the slicer in limited situations so for example in my particular use case scenario i figured out the distance from the bed to the bottom of this is 68 millimeters so it's very simple i simply tell the, the slicer to only print the first 68 millimeters, in which case all of this up here doesn't get printed at all. So that's a perfectly normal cylinder, or in our case, a nose cone, which you'll see in a moment, and that will print without support. Now, the print bed in your slicer is virtual. You can push things through it because it's just a, an, an image on the screen. Well, the neat thing is that's kind of like a cut tool. So if I were to tell it to do a Z offset of negative 68, I'm pushing the model through the print bed so only this part of the model is exposed above the print surface. And that's all it's going to print when I slice it. And the result is you get a real nice clean print like this. So that's the top half of the nose cone without the rest of the nose cone on there. And that will give you your two separate parts with absolutely no support. They'll come out clean. And then you just glue. You have your top half with your little fins on it. And you have your bottom half with no fins and you simply glue the two halves together and you have your complete part. So I'm going to show you now in Simplify 3D how to do this. You should be able to do this in other slicers. For example, in Prusa Slicer, you can actually cut the model into parts and you can tell it to save both parts or get rid of a part. So you could, you know, figure out where that line is so that you can figure out where the very bottom of the fins are and you can cut it right there and then you'll have two separate files. In fact, I'm going to add that to this process too. show you how to do that in Prusa Slicer. But first, I'm going to show you in Simplify 3D how I would do that. I would print the two separate parts, and then I would simply glue them together after they're printed. And you'll get a nice, clean print. Okay, so you're trying to print this, and you need supports for this. So how could you print this without supports? I want you to do that. First, I need to figure out where that starts. So we're going to zoom way in on that. I'm doing this in Simplify 3D, but you could probably do this in pretty much any slicer. So I'm going to go to Tools. I'm going to go to Variable Settings, and I'm going to bring my plane up to here. The only reason I'm doing this is to figure out where it is. So 68, so 0.1 is too high, 05. Looks like it touched it. So 68 millimeters is where I want to be. Okay, so I'm going to get out of that. All I'm going to do is come into my slicer settings here, and I'm going to tell it to stop at 68 millimeters. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to tell it to stop at 68 millimeters. You do your settings however you want to do your settings, but you need to stop for this particular model at 68 millimeters. I tell it prepare to print. Now, as you can see here, it's printing the nose cone without the blade, so this does not require any support. That's G-code file number one. G code file number two is I take this model and I do a negative 68 millimeter offset. That puts the model below the print bed. Now, this is a virtual print bed, so anything below the print bed simply doesn't get printed. So now I tell it to print it again. And as you can see here, let's go to the first layer. Let's go by layer. There you go. So you see the first layer includes the fins. So now I print the G code file number two. And I get the second half of the nose cone. Again, no support required. All I do is print these two separate G-code files and 
glue the file together. When I'm done, I glue the parts together after it's printed. But now you get the nice perfect fins with no support necessary. Um, these skinny fins might require a brim. So a brim might come in handy for this. So if we go into um, additions, skirt, let's do, I don't know, 10 outlines at zero. And that will give me this brim here. Looks like I don't need 10. I'm betting five will probably do it. Yep, five does it just fine. Maybe six to make this all wide. But there you go. There's a brim to hold it down to make sure those parts come out nice and crisp. And that's it. You print that. And now you take your two parts and you glue them together. Easy peasy, yummy squeezy. Now I'm going to switch over to Prusa Slicer and show you how to do the cut operation in Prusa Slicer. Believe it or not, the cut operation in Prusa Slicer is actually Slick 3R, I believe. is actually very powerful. It's very, very cool to be able to cut it in Prusa Slicer because you can actually save the two separate parts. And then you could export those as an STL and then bring them into whatever slice you prefer or just slice it in Prusa Slicer. So now we're going to switch over to Prusa Slicer and show you how to break those files apart. So here we are in Prusa Slicer, and we're going to do basically the same thing. Uh, it's actually slightly easier in Prusa Slicer. Um, it's, a, it's actually got pretty good functions for cutting apart, especially vertically, if you're going to keep both parts. So we select our bottle, and we have our manipulation tools here on the left. You can see them changing color. One on the bottom here is called Cut. That brings up a cut plane. And as you can see, I can drag that cut plane up and down through my model. Now, I happen to know exactly where that point is, but you can do it experimentally. Why can't I rotate? There we go. So I can grab this and see, there it goes. See how it disappears, appears, disappears right there. Come on, there it goes. So you see we're right at 68. Now, I happen to know this is 68, so I'm going to punch in 68. Now, you have options here on the left. You can get rid of a part or keep both parts, keep upper, lower, whatever. I'm going to keep both parts. Say perform cut. It's going to separate the two parts and put them on the bed. I can now manipulate the individual parts. And as you can see, if you are familiar with 3D printing, you're going to recognize that these now require no support whatsoever. With this on top of here, I would have to have support all the way from the bed, the platen, all the way to the underside of all these fins. And that would be a nightmare. <laughs> that would not be fun to print that. You'd waste a lot of time. You'd waste a lot of plastic. And you'd um, mar up the surface of your model, more points of failure. Doing it like this, your print is going to be perfect. I would print this hollow, probably, you know, three or four perimeters. Um, have the top have um, maybe 40% infill for the top 10 layers. And then same thing here, 40% infill for the bottom 40 layers. That will give you a good mating surface. You don't want to do 100% infill because um, if there's any kind of extrusion multiplier issue, um, the surfaces won't mate cleanly. So if you just do it like 30 or 40% infill, that'll give you enough surface area while also allowing um, any kind of over extrusion to get out of the way. So the parts should mate together easier. You can sand them a little bit if you have to. But now you can print this here with no support and this here with no support and then glue these two parts together after you're done printing them. That will save you time, save you plastic, and give you a much, much cleaner print. You're not even going to see the seam where the parts glue together because they're going to be under these blades. It'll be invisible unless someone actually picks it up and really looks closely. So that would work very, very well. And um, this won't work with everything, of course. You know, if you have a, if there was an arm sticking out of this model or something like that, this is obviously not going to work for that. And you're going to have to figure out a different way to do it. But if you have a vertically symmetrical model like this it's an alternative way of printing it without any support you can also take this into consideration when you're designing the parts if you're into designing parts um, you might be able to tweak your design just that tiny little bit to facilitate printability such as what i did here i made these blades flat on the bottom so that i can separate them and print this part separate versus this part without any support whatsoever and there you go. That is how you can print um, vertically symmetrical parts in multiple pieces to avoid the need for support. Um, this is also handy when you're trying to print something that is 
it fits within your X and Y build volume, but it doesn't fit within your Z build volume, and you want to print something tall, or you just want to avoid having to use support or having to use as much support. Let's say this was a more complex shape and I couldn't actually print it flat on the bed. It would still require some level of support. Well, by cutting it into two pieces, I go from needing this much support to needing this much support, which is much more reliable and much more stable. Something like that, I might even use a raft because a raft is just a very clean way of doing something like that. When you have a really complex, delicate surface attached to the bed. But as long as it's um, vertically symmetrical, or you just want to cut down on how much support you need, meaning you're not trying to cut it on X and Y, you're just trying to cut it on Z, you can do that in Prusa Slicer to save and export the parts. Or if you're simply printing chunks, um, you could do in any slicer, you can just tell it to stop at a certain height and then drop it into the bed that amount and then print the next, next segment as a separate G code file comes in very very handy if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask down below and i will see you guys in the next video